Hi, this is Shady, and a few months back I did a video called uh, Judo versus Greco-Roman wrestling, and I've compared techniques. Um, how, for example, the body lock takedown is actually a few techniques in Judo, how they are done in a few different contexts like the parterre and a failed throw and many things. And that video did very well actually, and I will link it at the end. So um, just yesterday I covered Kushti and I've talked about the origins of many things that are very much hidden or we don't know that much about. So for example, Judo, we might think that, okay, this is just Japanese Jiu Jitsu with, um, with the like, hurtful techniques taken out the dangerous technique taken out uh, but it is actually a far more deep and uh, subtle transition that went from uh, jujitsu to judo it is very cultural it is very political and it is very social and intellectual it is not just on the technique level for example bjj the same thing uh, maeda arrived in brazil and met a very talented little boy called Carlos Gracie and then Elio took uh, the torch and continued on and thus we have what is called BJJ when the actuality the story is far more deeper far more detailed and less romantic than it seems to be so um, which brings me to this subject Greco-Roman wrestling I have said it multiple times I love Greco-Roman wrestling if I wasn't a judoka I'd probably be a Greco-Roman wrestler. It is a beast of a martial art with an upright posture, very much like Judo, the Shizentai, and also control of the body, of the upper body, and the street fight is all that matters. Uh, it's not that hunched over uh, posture. It's not being on the ground all the time, but it is this starting with a very good posture and taking someone down and pinning them and really showing dominance. Uh, it is, uh, it is without submissions like chokes and locks and it is without leg grabbing and uh, yet no one is saying it is underrepresented but that's none of my business. So the name Greco-Roman wrestling, it might suggest that oh it is just the ancient form that they used to do uh, naked wrestling in uh, Greece. We say immediately pancreation when in fact this is not uh, pancreation pancreation even it had its revival back in the 70s and it had a lot of uh, new martial arts added to it like judo muay thai etc by Arvan jim arvanitis so even that has different origins but when it comes to greco-roman wrestling the idea is far different because back then we are talking 18th 19th century in all aspect like art martial arts and even architecture there was this very big trend of really revi reviving the old because, you know, back when I was in architecture school, there was, uh, I was studying the 19th century architecture and there was what is called the, um, after the uh, Baroque and the Neoclassicism, etc., there was what is called the Neo-Gothic. So it was like a, a time for revival of all that is old and martial art was not an exception i always talk about this martial art are not an entity of its own it is a part of society the political uh, climate and what is happening like political class socio-economical all of it martial art is there pretty much so today we're gonna see a uh, a different story of how really greco-roman came uh, to be so uh this is according to united world wrestling I will leave the link in the description below for you to enjoy it. So, um, we all know that Greco is um, is like where you cannot grab the legs, you cannot use your legs to attack. Uh, everything is from the waist up when it comes to defense and attack. Even on the ground, you cannot grab legs. So, even far more restrictive than Judo when it comes to the uh, leg grabbing. So the idea goes, or the story goes, is that uh, it is actually one of Napoleon's soldiers called Jean uh, X. Brayat. He developed this style. He was going through, um, you know, doing fairs and also doing shows and demonstrations using this particular style. He called it at first uh, lutte à plat main, meaning a flat hand wrestling to separate it from the hand-to-hand -hand combat that was 
uh, going on back then from catch uh, and also uh, the striking and a lot of the stuff like biting etc so in 1848 that was the first time that he really wrote an official rule set and this one included that nothing below the waist should be held or touched with the legs or with the hands also um, you cannot use any painful submissions or torsions that will injure or maim an opponent so it was called back then flat hand wrestling or french wrestling and in my opinion the most logical way to call it is actually french wrestling in my opinion so we have the french kickboxing which is savat that was actually uh invented somewhat in the, during the uh, after the the revolution because crime rate has gone up theft etc there was just chaos so anytime you take out uh, a regime you're gonna have this small period well depending how small it is period of a vacuum a power vacuum and it's gonna cause a lot of chaos on the ground it's gonna be absolutely chaotic and a lot of people are gonna suffer so the um, Savat that's how Savat was born so uh, this is a few decades after that so we are still in the same area where France is still trying to repair itself French wrestling was uh, mostly done for by uh, Jean X Briat for for uh, economic reasons so he was going uh, in circuses fairs etc and making a lot of money so that was the trend apparently um so and then it was actually called french wrestling so it became very popular in europe a lot of people started to train it like scandinavians uh, italians uh, greeks etc so uh, then one day one italian wrestler called basilio bartoletti named it greco-roman wrestling because he was so fond and interested in ancient uh, history and ancient values so as i mentioned uh, this was a time to really renovate or really um, show the interest and value in stuff that are um, very much uh, of the ancient world like roman empire the neo-gothic um, even uh, in arts in paintings you would see a lot of the stuff that we're trying to go back to the um the, the chiaroscuro movement i'm sorry this is like a little bit different but we have to understand that back then especially the 19th century there was this huge interest in order to really replicate or pay homage to everything that was of the antiquity so martial arts especially this so it was kind of like a very romantic name to give it greco-roman wrestling kind of like when you love something old and then you name it back you give it back the name so it wasn't exactly uh, greco-roman wrestling so obviously there was some uh, influence from palais which is actually the naked uh, ancient greek wrestling which dates back to i'd say around 8,000 years old um maybe i'll cover it in a video of its own uh but that's mainly it that's how the term and how the rules etc so it's it's obviously um inspired by the ancient forms of wrestling but this uh, whole rules and all these throwing etc or this focus of throws is actually because of this one man uh, Jean Exprayat that made all this uh, rule set um, that wanted to distinguish itself from the striking and submissions and all the stuff that were in other forms of wrestling so um, the British and the Americans were not very fond of this style because they uh, really liked freestyle wrestling uh, maybe I'll cover the origins of freestyle in another video so because they keep in mind the british back then were very big on catch the hooking uh submission painful cranks and submission holds and also they were grabbing legs and throwing and shooting doubles so obviously they're not going to be a big fan of the idea of not grabbing below the waist so it wasn't that popular in britain and america but uh in france and all of europe was it was actually very uh popular so um, there was this uh, one man that served in the franco-prussian war by the name of uh, william malden that trained greco-roman wrestling he wanted to make it popular in britain but he somewhat failed and also america after the civil war but he was very successful in europe uh, as i mentioned earlier so uh, it was very popular actually even the russians even before like we say the soviets uh, countries 
they were very big they're still very big on wrestling etc even before that even the czar would pay a lot of athletes to perform wrestling uh, greco-roman to be uh, exact so kind of like uh, the sumo wrestlers and the daimyo that would be paid hefty sums of money in order to go out and perform and bring you know glory to their uh, daimyo but here it was the russian czar so uh this is a very fun fact the uh, Greco-Roman wrestling was actually the first form of wrestling to be adopted into the Olympic Games since the very beginning in 1896, the first Olympic Games in Athens, uh, Greco-Roman wrestling was present. So uh, it wasn't played during uh, Paris in 1900 and St. Louis in 1904 when they added a freestyle. So they gave freestyle a chance. Uh, but that's it. So if you think about it, the uh, just like any other other martial art like jujitsu, um, judo, etc., the idea or the story is far more detailed and far less romantic. So um, this is something that really interests me because it seems that this is a tra a thing in martial art to really romanticize a story, even though the evidence are just all over the place and yet we tend to choose um the romantic version of the story it just shows how um i don't know i don't want to call us emotional beings but we tend to gravitate towards those uh, beautiful things because um uh, we tend to love these arts very much you don't see someone that does martial arts especially really dedicated and loves it uh how do you say mediocre in a mediocre manner it is you either see someone full on or they're just like ah, okay and then they end up leaving so i think this is a reason why we tend to like or gravitate towards these romantic versions of these uh i mean even the idea like the way they came up with the name was actually a very romantic thought because it was paying homage to the olds and you know back then the whole of europe was doing the same thing with everything like architecture clothing uh, art and of course wrestling so uh, if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only and would really appreciate your support also don't forget to check out josh simon's uh, shop for historical t-shirts and historical articles this was shady and thank you for listening